Welcome to this podcast series on The Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. Are you wondering how deep tech startups move from the lab and successfully to market? This series may help to address some of your questions. I'm your host, Aoife Mangan, and in this series, I interview technology experts from many different industries, including space, energy, health, and quantum. In each episode, we meet with a European Innovation Council, which is also known as the EIC Program Manager, and listen to their experiences in scaling up European deep tech. In case you haven't heard of the EIC, it's Europe's flagship innovation program, which supports university-based tech projects and game-changing tech companies or tech startups. Today, we're talking about intellectual property and particularly its importance in safeguarding the rights of startups in sectors that are less traditionally associated with intellectual property, such as agri-tech or nutrition and food or the food supply chain. While protecting intellectual assets has been quite standard practice in the creation of tech companies, it is less commonly associated with entrepreneurial endeavours in the agriculture and nutrition sectors. Securing companies working in these sectors is significant because it ensures the strengthening of future food tech, food sustainability, and, of course, access to nutrition for all. Here to talk to us about the importance of intellectual property protection is Ivan Stefanich, who is an EIC program manager for Food Chain Technologies, Novel and Sustainable Food. Welcome to you, Ivan, and many thanks for being here with us. Hello, and thank you for the invitation. Ivan, can you tell us why safeguarding your intellectual property is important? And more specifically, why is it so important in the area of agri-tech entrepreneurship? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, at this point, Eva, I wouldn't even differentiate uh, agribusinesses from other businesses. They all have to secure one thing at the very beginning, freedom to operate. It is very dangerous and possibly expensive to infringe on someone's IP. Uh, Protected IP has also an excellent capacity to establish the entry barrier for possible newcomers, and it is a source of additional income. But let me explain that in more details. You decided to exploit your IP by producing your products or delivering services yourself. But it is very difficult to cover global demand, and you most likely don't have knowledge about specific customers' preferences in some remote territories. So it makes sense to license out your IP to reliable local partner, hence additional income. We also have several important benefits related to IP, like IP serving as collateral for your loans, IP as a reason for increased market value, and then uh, improved image of your company. It is even possible that you influence the whole industry, shape future industry standards. But most importantly, it is peace of mind. Resolve your IP issues properly, and you shouldn't worry about it anymore. Thank you very much, Ivan. And can can we talk a little bit about the differences between agribusinesses and other businesses when it comes to IP? Let's talk about differences, but also talk about similarities. Uh, Just like any other businesses, agribusiness can use patents, designs, and trademarks uh, as the most frequent instruments to protect IP, even copyrights and a combination of those instruments. It is highly unlikely that agribusinesses will use topography of semiconductors to protect their IP, but they would use a lot of protection of geographical indication and origin and protection uh, for new plant varieties. Uh, Just like any other business, agribusinesses would also use a lot of soft IP, unregistered brand, internet domains, profiles on social networks, company names, even emails, and of course, business secrets. Many thanks, Ivan. Can you explain a little bit what are the pitfalls around intellectual property protection? How can entrepreneurs be left vulnerable to these pitfalls? This question should be answered in layers. So let's start with the most important one. Uh, Not respecting other people's IP is classic. Getting involved in complicated and costly lawsuits uh, could lead to bankruptcy even before taking off properly. The next one is even bigger. Uh, not respecting your own IP. Uh, But doing that, you possibly will not achieve the greatness you otherwise might achieve. Uh, Don't take me wrong. I'm not talking about protected IP only. IP could serve you perfectly even as an unprotected IP, but you should treat it properly like a trade secret. Uh, When it comes to high-tech and global businesses, I prefer to have my IP protected. 
But exactly uh, there you can find an interesting group of possible mistakes like neglecting important territories, selecting wrong protection instrument, filing too late, or even too early, uh, forgetting to maintain protection, or even not enforcing your IP. Scientists uh, frequently make a common mistake. They go for publication or conference participation, and by doing that, they are ruining their chances to obtain patent protection. Uh, when it comes to food, uh, various religious standards and ver uh, are very important, as well as various quality standards like organic, biological, dynamic, and others. Excellent. Thank you, Ivan. And can you tell us a little bit about what you do in your capacity as an EAC program manager and perhaps a little bit about how your experience in the area of IP protection helps you in your role? My main responsibilities are drafting new challenges and proactively managing thematic and challenge portfolios of projects. In practice, that is helping individual projects to work as a team, support each other, and integrate their solutions into comprehensive, reliable, efficient, and affordable system that can be later implemented in agriculture and food processing. Uh, knowing fine details about IP uh, certainly helped me to advise my projects not to make common mistakes I was talking earlier about. So although our applicants are from reputed universities, they are not always well-trained in IP and uh, advice on that is important. So, like, when is the most appropriate time to prepare your IP strategy? Brief answer, as soon as possible, even before applying to EIC funding. When to execute it? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. It's case sensitive. There is no universal answer. Uh, it would depend on many things uh, which are very specific to each and particular project. Brilliant. Thank you, Ivan. And finally, can we have a word on the European Innovation Council itself? How can this program for game-changing entrepreneurs help a tech research project or business grow? Developing deep tech and disruptive innovation is our job, and that's a tough job. Regardless of how, you are, uh, how good you are as a founder and CEO, it is nearly impossible to know everything, and it is important to understand the basics, but much better is to have a dedicated team member to cover that, that area. At EIC, we have uh, an extensive program to help you in this domain. Small grants like booster grants, tech-to-market services, business acceleration services, providing consultancy support, specialized trainings, even boot camps. Uh, our listeners could check later the EIC portal for more details about those services. And then additionally, uh, ASMEA runs the largest global business network, Enterprise Europe Network. And an important part of EEN is EUIP Help Desk, a large team of national EUIP Help Desk ambassadors capable to provide IP advice in your own language. Very clear. Thanks very much, Ivan. This is all we have time for today, folks. So a big thank you again to my panelist, Ivan Stefanic, and to all you listeners out there. This brings us to the end of our podcast, part of the series, The Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. Until next time. 